Okay. All right. So um, if there are comments, please forgive me if I don't answer them right away because I'll be, I don't want to be too squirrely looking back and forth, but I'll try. I'll do my best. Okay, so I thought what I would do is just start with a little introduction. Um, I'm Stacy. Some of you guys don't know me. Um, I have been a beach body coach for um, just over two years now. Um, uh, so I'm a mom, I'm a, a wife, we have a blended family. Um, our oldest is my stepson, and then I have a son, and then our daughter is ours. Um, kind of just rewind a little bit. I used to be a hairdresser um, for 10 years, and then after um, my daughter was born, I um, we were fortunate enough that I was able to stay home with her. And... Um, so I, I felt really good about that because um, after my son was born, um, I had to go back to work hairdressing. And I remember leaving him at daycare just feeling super sad and, and wish I could stay home. But had to put food on the table. So off to work I went. But second time around, I was able to stay home. And then so thought that was all great. And then I found myself unhappy with that decision. I found, um, I felt isolated. I felt um, a little envious of um, other working moms. I felt envious of my husband that he was able to leave and go to work. And I loved being at home, but at the same time, I was also feeling very lonely and um, yeah, just isolated. So looking back, I think there is a little bit of depression um, going on. And so I was just desperately searching for something more, like, is this it? Like, so I joined the gym, um, Motion Fitness, and um, so I put Abby in the daycare there. That was great because she got to socialize with other babies and stuff, and I um, started doing the classes, and it was me time. And then um, I loved them so much, I started teaching. So then I got my um, group fitness, and then I started teaching spin and P90X Live. And um, Marie Barker came into my class one day, and that is actually how, um, she's my coach, that's how I was introduced to Beachbody. Um, well, I was introduced to it through teaching P90X, but P90X Live is different than Beachbody coaching, as you guys know. Um, so, but I didn't know that at the time. So she said she was a beach body coach and I was intrigued, um, cause I was on this journey already of finding myself and finding that something more, um, but not wanting to go back to a nine to five either. Like, um, knowing I had a good thing being able to stay home with my kids, but mm -hmm. some moms will be able to relate to that and some maybe not, but that's okay. It's, we're all on different, we all have our own journey, but so anyways, her and I went for coffee. She explained what coaching was, and I still didn't really fully understand what it was, but I signed up right then and there. Um, I got a challenge pack. Um, I signed up my husband. Um, I, um, we got the full supplement line, and I remember that night waking up with anxiety, like just like, oh, my God, what am I doing? <laughs> I have no idea what what this means. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I, I, so I started playing those head games, you know, where you self sabotage yourself a little bit. And, um, I just remember thinking like, okay, I, I don't want to do this. Like starting to kind of talk myself out a bit. Um, I remember being really hesitant and resistant towards the workouts. I, I remember saying to myself, well, how good can they be? Like I already teach at the gym. Um, so sort of being judgmental about the workouts. I remember being really resistant um, about the Shakeology, thinking like, well, here we go. Another company selling us a magic shake, right? Um, so I just, I wasn't buying into it right away. Um, but I, I knew I was, I knew there was something good and great in here. Um, and I knew not to give up on it. Um, but I had to do work through it a little bit. So, um, I started basically doing, doing it. 
<laughs> and that's how um, I started loving it is I started taking the shakes every day and I started slowly seeing what it was doing for me, like for our health, for my husband, because he's a busy, um, he runs, um, he's managing for partner at EY. He's very busy, very stressful, high stress job. And he was like getting fatigued and burnt out. So um, I saw what the shakes were doing for him and for me. Um, wasn't needing a nap anymore during the day. Um, way less bloating, um, way more energy. Um, overall healthier, way less colds and flus in the winter, stuff like that. So I started really loving the shakes and now I'm addicted to it. Now it's like an addiction. If you don't get your shake, you guys know how that feels. You just want your shake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the workouts I, I love. So once I started being stopped being stubborn about them and I actually did like a program from start to finish, Ship Shop was my first one, by the way. Um, and I got amazing results from Ship Shop. I'm like, okay, this is actually a really good thing and i just need to get the hell out of my own way and stop trying to self um self-sabotage but we tend to do that to ourselves so that's just a quick introduction about me and how i got into this whole coaching thing um and so now i'm just gonna kind of give you some tips from how i got from there to the anxious person that just signed up to where i am now to uh, just over two years um and I just wrote little jot notes, so I'll try to um, not be too squirrely, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Anyways, um, first of all, everybody has something to bring to the table. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are. It doesn't matter. Um, this business is not biased. It, it, it works with everybody. So um, I was like 40 years old when I signed up, I thought, oh my God, I'm too old. I would, I'd watch some of you younger girls thinking like, they're so great on social media. And, and I was really uncomfortable on social media. We'll get to the social media part in a second. But what you need to do is hone into what are your strengths. So for me, mine was the fitness background. So and that's going to be different for all of us. Some of you are um, nurses, so you've got the kind of the science stuff behind it. Or some of you are educators, and you're really good at educating. And we all have something to bring to the table. So actually, if you have a pen, or, or you could just put it in the comments, right? I want you to think about what, what it is that you bring to your coaching business. Like, what are your strengths? And, um, and really play off that because we're not all gonna be Virginia. <laughs> we're not all gonna be Marie. We, we're gotta be our own authentic self within this business. So make sure you write that down, what your strength is, and then work with it. Um, don't, okay, so now we'll talk about the social media part. Don't worry if you don't have a huge following. You guys, when I started, I had 350 people on Facebook and I was just getting into Instagram and I think I maybe had 100 people on Instagram. Um, I was randomly posting like only stuff about my kids usually. Um, so I didn't have a lot of engagement and I really didn't even know how to work social media properly. So, um, I, I really don't think you need to get caught up in the numbers. I have found myself doing this over time, over the time I've been coaching, but I, it, it just keeps coming back to your engagement um, with the amount of people you have is more important than having a whole bunch of people. So if you have a smaller um, following, but your engagement is really good, then um, that's better than having a lot of followers and not having a lot of engagement. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so it's more about the quality over the quantity. Well, that's what's important to me anyways. Um, and I still find people every month and uh, my following is still not huge. Like I'm not at like 14K like some of you guys. Like I'm literally at like maybe under 2000 for Facebook and um, I, I'm still trying to get a thousand followers on Instagram, but I still get success club every month. So it doesn't matter about your numbers. It matters about how you're engaging with the people and um, the conversations you're having. And so 
with my social media posts, remember to be consistent and, and post, like I, I always post one valuable post a day. Like I don't waste time. I'm too busy. Uh, I don't waste time doing random posts. That's what I, I use my stories for on my Instagram. I'll do like random food pics or whatever's happening throughout my day on there. I'll throw it up there, but I just do, I do one um, really good valuable post per day. Um, and if I'm not feeling it, then I don't fake it because people feed off that. And it's true. Like whatever you put out to the universe is going to come back to you. So, so remember that on those days when you don't feel um, like posting and you're sort of forcing it, remember that, but get back engaged when you're feeling up to it. Don't make it, don't let too much time go by. Um, and I pick five things, um, that kind of show who I am on my social media. So like for me, my business, I talk about that, obviously family, my dog, food and travel and pay attention to what people like. Like, it's so funny. I'll I'll post something about my business and I'll hardly get any likes and then I'll put a family pickup and I've got like 200 uh, comments. So you really have to pay attention to what your viewers are wanting from you. Um, so, and then feed off of that too, right? Um, so I throw up a family pick and then you can even add in some of your business stuff with that too. Um, Stop, stop self-sabotaging. That is huge for me. I have been a huge, huge self-sabotager in my past, and that's something that I'm working on. And you guys, that only changes with PD. So when every when you go on these calls and everybody talks about PD, 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 it's it's not just a little bit important. It's like the whole thing. <laughs> like it is if you're in a slump, because there's gonna be ebbs and flows with this business. Some days you're gonna be on a roll, some days you're gonna be, you know, barely hitting success club, like whatever. Um, but personal development is huge and um, it's imperative because all those um, blocks in our head, um, all those labels we've given ourselves over the years, those are this, like we all have baggage, like it's inevitable. Um, and we're all working through our own baggage. And so how do you think you're going to work through it if you don't actually read personal development? My mom is so funny because she's, she's like dead against, she calls self-help. And she's like, I don't read self-help. And then she told me what book she was reading. And I'm like, mom, that's self-help. <laughs> so yeah, you do read it. And it's okay. Reading self-help or personal development does not mean you're broken. It means you want to continue growing as a person. So um, get a book. I always have a book going. I'm always pounding on personal development because I'm just so eager to keep this momentum train going of growth because when you're green, you grow, and when, when you're ripe, you rot. So I choose to keep growing. I don't want to rot. <laughs> not yet. Um, tracker is imperative also. Um, you guys heard us talk lots about that. Um, I do it every day, all the time. And sometimes I don't fill it all out and that's okay. Good enough is better than nothing. So remember that, like if, especially if you're a perfectionist, um, you don't have to bang out that tracker perfect, but it feels really good if you bang out half of it instead of none of it. And then that might get your momentum going and you might want to send out five invites on top of it or whatever. So um, good enough is better than nothing. Just remember that. There's no such thing as perfect, but yet we all strive for perfection, which is crazy. Um, and that's where PD comes in. <laughs> um, so morning routines. I read the book, I believe it was The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Have you guys read that book? Um, really good book for, um, like she talks about, um, she talks about sleep patterns and how like the first two hours upon waking are your most, um, productive, um, hours of your day and, um, how your energy just starts getting drained after that. So, um, sleep patterns, we all have like, we all have sleep patterns in our sleep and they're like 90 minutes long. So it's really important when your alarm goes off. I don't like waking up with an alarm. I wake up by myself. But um, it's important to get up as soon as you wake up. Um, 
sometimes lately with my age and my hormones, I find 4 a.m. wake up sometimes. But you know what? I used to fight that and try and make myself go back to sleep. But all you're doing when you do that or when you hit snooze is you're putting yourself back into one of those sleep patterns. So um, if you wake yourself up in the middle of a sleep pattern, that's why sometimes you're really groggy for most of the morning because um, wow. you're stuck in one of those sleep patterns. So it's really important to wake up right away. I never bring my phone to my bedroom at night. And I have teenagers, I have a teenager that's out, but I tell them, call the house phone. Like I set up a plan before. <laughs> So that I don't have to have my um, phone. Sorry, I'm just muting. There. Um, see, scroll. <laughs> Anyways, um, I I make a plan with my son that, so that he comes up when he gets home, so I know that he's home, or I get him to call the help, the landline if there was ever an emergency. I don't even know if he'd remember what the landline number is because. <laughs> But anyways, um, I never bring my phone to my room. It's really important that you do that. And then when I wake up in the morning, I do use it for my guided meditation, but that's all I use it for. And then I put it aside. So like, don't be a slave to your phone. Don't be a prisoner to your phone. Even though we do this business from our phone, make a, a quit time too. So like I find once in a while, my husband and I will just be sitting there scrolling mindlessly and I'm like hey whoa what are we doing let's put our phones down let's go do something productive like we we are getting really bad now especially we use our phone in our business so I feel like I'm gonna have that bump neck so <laughs> I'm always like this um so it's really important to pick times and and um yeah put a stop time to your work too um Okay, so just a funny stat. Um, we look at our phones 52 times a day at least, and 2,000 times a day we tap our phone. And 33% of people check their email in the middle of the night. What? That's crazy. Um, oh, yeah, another good book for morning routines is Miracle Morning by Hal Alrod. Um, lots of you probably read it. If you haven't, you should. That book has really changed my life. I used to get up grumpy. I used to be like pissed if I didn't get a long enough sleep and then want to go back to bed. <laughs> and now I'm just like, oh, it is what it is. And then I get up and I'm happy. So it really changes your mindset about sleep. Um, I can't speak for you shift workers. That's a whole different story, Sandy. I'm, I, I wish it was that easy, right? Um, but sleep is super important, like holy crap, especially as we get older. Um, so making sure you're on calls and, um, uh, listening to the wake up call every Monday. Like if I can't be on a call, I actually love this part of our business because it's like, oh my God, there's other real people doing this. Hey, <laughs> cause we we're very isolated doing this business. Right. So it's really good. I love these calls for that. Um, and then I always listen to the, um, wake up call. If I miss it, I'll listen to the recording. Um, live events are huge. Um, and the trips, um, I have not been to Summit yet, but I'm, I'm booked. I'm going next year, can't wait. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so for me with this business, um, I wanted to make this a hobby business. So you kind of have to be clear about your goals. Like, what do you want to do with your business? Like, are you, are you trying to hit Million Club? Or do you, want to, do you want to make this a hobby? Like, where are your goals? Be clear with them, write them down. And then what do you need to do to achieve that? So for me, when I first started, I wanted this to be a hobby job and I wanted to it to pay for the products that I was purchasing. So I thought, well, at least if I can do that, I'll be, I'll be happy. And then anything on top of that's a bonus. So I made it a non-negotiable from the get go to, um, hit success club every month. And I don't think I've missed maybe one month since I started. And, um, I just go in with that with an abundance mindset. And I know that sounds lame and I got nothing more. I just got that. And honestly, like 
if you, it's just like going back to the universe. If you, if you believe it's there, if you believe it's there for you, it'll provide for you. The universe does not want to work against you. It wants to work for you. It wants to work with you. So it's your job to get in the, the right mindset for that abundance to come to you. And it will, <laughs> it will. Um, it's so funny. It's like the rock star parking. I'll give you this example. Like my husband and I, whenever we're going somewhere, he always goes to the furthest freaking parking spot away from wherever we're going to the restaurant or whatever. And I was like, what are you doing? Like drive up front. Like we'll get a spot. And he's like, no, there'll be no parking. I'm like, well, of course there's not going to be now because you're saying there isn't going to be. But if you go in saying, I'm going to get freaking rock star parking, you're going to get it. And honestly, I'm not shitting you nine times out of 10. I always get the rock star parking. Because I'm ballsy enough because I'm like, I'm going to get it. And Jeff's like, no, I'm not. And he goes and parks at the Walmart parking lot across the street because he didn't want to go for Rockstar. Anyways, not, well, that's, we have a little fight about that every time we go out. Um, follow up with everyone. Um, some people need it more than others. Like in my group, like in my group challenge every month, there are some people that are just like, they love it. They're in there. They're already posting. They're, they're great. I love those ones. And then there's some that you don't ever see again. You sell them a challenge pack and then you're like, what the F? Like, where are they? So follow up with those people. There's nothing that breaks my heart more than when I sell somebody, like I get them set up and they're all excited about it. And then I don't hear from them. They didn't follow through. I've learned to let this go, you guys, because we can't control everything. Like we can't. I'm giving you the tools. I'm here to support you, and I do. I, I give them my whole heart. I follow up with them. I'm like, what can I do to help you? But if they're not going to actually, like I can't come into their house and do it for them, right? We can't. So don't get sad if somebody doesn't do it. Like it's not on you, it's on them, and they'll come around eventually, but so how I run my challenge groups is I just have an ongoing challenge group and I just keep adding people into it. And to keep it fresh and fun, I always have like a new one starting every month, but I always let everybody pick which program they want to do. Some of us are doing MM100, some are doing 80 day obsession, um, some are doing like whatever, like they pick their own and then um, we all post in there and then I do prizes every month for participation. So. Um, I buy like, you know, the little um, Energize and, and um, Recover, those little packs. I give that away and just other little trinkets. People love getting free shit, you guys. And people love um, being rewarded for like, good job, well done, right? So keep your group challenges fun. We have a lot of fun in mine. I go live in there a lot. Um, Sandy was saying how they're doing like live workouts, like, Zoom chat workouts, that's really cool. Maybe we'll start getting, or even, you know, I've, um, I have a lot of challengers that are here in the same city as me. So I, I have mentioned maybe getting together for a workout together too. So, you know, like, don't be afraid to be creative. Make your group challenges a lot of fun. Um, actually, we talked about, like, everybody has their own jam. That's kind of my jam because I'm already a fitness instructor. So I find that part to be really, like, easy for me. But again, some might find that a little bit not as easy. So whatever, like work with your work with your tools that you got. Um, and try other products. We've talked about this lots too, like being proof of the product. For example, I've never tried the three-day refresh. So right now I'm doing it and I'm posting all about it and I'm getting a whole bunch of conversations just about the three-day refresh. Right? Three-day refresh right now, which is um, cool. Um, so yeah, like just, be creative and make it fun when you try the new products and share it with people and people will definitely ask about it. Okay, here's the other thing. Sales. Everybody thinks of the word sales as such a dirty, sleazy word. Like, oh, I'm, I don't want to sell anything to somebody. We have this like thing in our head where we don't want to sell, right? It's just, they think of like a sleazy car salesman. I'm sorry if anyone's a car salesman. <laughs> I don't think that I don't but there is the stigma about that so um, really we are all in the business of sales like I don't care if you're a nurse I don't care if you're a teacher I don't care if you're um, a 
accountant going on a first date, you're selling yourself to somebody. I mean, not selling yourself, but I mean, you're, you're trying to win them over, right? So <laughs> you are selling and you guys, it doesn't have to be a dirty, scary word. Like we are, I really truly have passion for what I'm selling to people. I believe in them. I use them. And I, I if you want to use the word share that, and it sounds better in your world, that's fine. But really, it's just a confidence thing. Like I, I know that these are good products, so I confidently can sell them to people and I don't feel bad if they don't use them. That's not on me. That's on them. I, I know in my heart, I'm doing everything I can to get them set up for success. But like I said, not everybody will be on the same page with their journey. Not everybody's ready when they think they're ready. So you got to let that go too a little bit. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Who has heard, um, oh, your pyramid scheme business that you're running? <laughs> I, I used to freaking hate that. It used to actually get me angry. And now I don't care because, you know, I thought about it. And if you're in a business and there's a boss at the top and then there's managers underneath and then receptionists, like who isn't in a pyramid? So, um, the funny thing is, though, when you're the boss at the top, there's only one boss at the top. In our business, at least if you want, you could take this higher. So um, there is, the sky is the limit with this business, really. You can take it as high as you want if you want to put in the work. So I just, I don't even care anymore when I hear that. This, oh, the, oh yeah, that pyramid thing. Don't even worry about it because... And most businesses are a pyramid, if you think about it that way. Um, I talked about the abundance mindset, um, rank drops and ups and downs with ranks. So that's another thing we should talk about in this business. Um, so my highest rank I've hit is diamond and I've hit it like three times and I've dropped every time. Um, but I'm not worried about it because I know I'll get it back. And that's part of this business. We can't control what other people do. So you can do the hard work and get everything put in place, but you can't control if a coach quits or um, whatever. If somebody stops their shake order. So rank dropping is part of life of this business. And you just have to know that going in and um, just work hard to get more coaches underneath you. And um, it's, you can't take it too personally. It's something you can't control, right? What's the saying? Lord, give me the strength to control what I can control and blah, blah, blah. You know, that saying, something like that. Anyways, you can't control it. So, um, and I don't want to do this business to chase rank. Um, I just feel morally wrong doing that. Like, to me, I'm doing this because I have passion. I truly have passion for health, wellness, fitness, and I want to share that with other people. As a fitness instructor, I'm only able to help those people that come to my class at 9.30 in the morning, and then they leave, and that's it. But this has opened up that so I can help so many more people and all over the world, not just in my city, like all over. So um, I, I don't do this business to chase rank, and, and, and I never will. Because I just, to me, that that is not with in line with my morals. When you hit it, though, it's awesome and celebrate the shit out of that because that's really amazing. Uh, I'm not saying not to reach, have goals and go for it. I'm saying don't do the business to chase a rank. So if you're chasing somebody down saying, can you buy this? And you know in your heart of hearts, it's so you can get that rank back. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I, and again, double-edged sword, if you never ask, you don't know either. So do what you can always, but, um, you know, you just know when, when it's not feeling right and have fun with it. Um, this is meant to be fun. You guys, this isn't meant to be like, Oh my God, I dropped diamond. I'm going to end my life. This is so depressing. Like have fun with this business. Who cares if you drop diamond, you'll get it back when you get it back and just focus on the great things like <clears throat> helping people get healthier. Why you got into this business in the first place. 
Um, how I did get to Diamond in the first place is I offer that discount coach to everybody, everybody. Sandy taught me this a long time ago on one of our calls. She talked about this and I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even think about that. So if that was me one time, probably some of you guys aren't thinking about that. But honestly, anytime I sell a challenge pack, I say to them, so the Shakeology is going to come auto ship. So it's, it's totally optional if you want to keep it going or if you don't. If you do, if you're even going to keep it going for one month, Sign up for the coach discount because it's free right now and you will save yourself $24 a month. And then I have that picture of the coach discount, how it breaks it down and I send that to them so they can see the numbers for themselves because sometimes when we try to explain it, it sounds sketchy, but if they actually see the grid and the breakdown of how it does save them $24 a month, even with the $19.99 or whatever fee, um, then they get it. And then usually they sign up for the coach discount and when they do sign up for the coach discount that way usually they'll stay on the Shakeology longer so it's a win-win because they're getting some um, healthy good stuff in their body and you're getting the commission for it um, hit success club every month if you want to get your products free and like your Shaco free and to go on the freaking success club trip that is so fun <laughs> I'd love it um, and again, it's like when we get to get together and say, oh my God, there are other coaches out there. It's not just me doing this business by myself. This is a real legit business. And um, it's so great to interact with all you guys. So I went on my first success club trip last year. It was super fun and I'm going again next year. Can't wait. So make that your goals if it hasn't been because they are so fun. Um, this is a small investment in ourselves um, for endless possibilities of whatever you want to take this business to. So like I said, be clear on your goals and it's your journey, nobody else's. So take those goals where you want to be really um, strong and like with yourself and just know where you want to take this business and then crush the shit out of your goals. <laughs> and, um, have fun with this journey because that's and you know what you guys I was I'm not gonna lie like I was sort of um head in the sand about this call like just oh it's in September so like er, when I signed up for it originally and then like that's a long time away and then the days got closer and closer and I was just not really overthinking it because I knew if I overthought it because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I get all my panties tied up in a knot about it and try to make it perfect and that's exactly why I meditated right before this is because we're not, there's no such thing as perfect. Like I'm like, stop, just go wing this call. I wrote out a few jot notes and it's like, you know what? This is what we preach to everybody. Like step out of your comfort zone, try new things, grow, right? So I was like, okay, I got to do this. And I'm so glad I did because it's not that scary. <laughs> you guys are all lovely. Um, oh yeah, that was the other thing. We're all on um, a journey of our own at different spots in our life. And um, some people figure that out, shit out early in life and some figure it out like mid, like me, aged, and some people never figure that out. So that is super, super sad when, when they go through life never figuring it out. But I'm so proud of a lot of you girls that are younger than me, like in your 20s, and you're already on this path to figuring it and finding yourself. Because if I would have done that when I was your age, that would have saved me a lot of tears and, and sweat and stuff. But like kudos to you guys for starting your journey already right now. And, and if you're not in your 20s and you're older-ish, Oh, age is just a number. Um, kudos to you too, because it's never too late to grow. It's never too late to, you can always change your story anytime. It doesn't have to be depressed Stacy who was searching for something, who was kind of envious of other people, but felt guilty because wanted to be home with her kids, but didn't know, blah, blah, blah. So I rewrote my story because I didn't like the one I was in. And that's, all it takes, it takes some guts, it takes some personal development, it takes being able to be vulnerable, to be real, to be raw, and that's it. Um, 
So coaching has given me my purpose back. Um, something for me, I've grown so much in the past two years um, as a mother, as a wife, as an individual, most importantly. I'm just happier, healthier, and I love that we get to help other people find that too. And you know what? Not everybody will find it as much as I did. Some people will just get the fitness out of it. Some people will just get the nutrition. Some people will get all of it and grow spiritually and the whole bit. So we're all on different journeys. Um, you're, this is a good place to start. And I think that's kind of all I have. How am I doing for time? <laughs> so is there any questions? Not really? Totally not. Aw, thank you. Brandon and I are over here just like raising the roof. Well, Brandon's behind me raising the roof. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> but you killed it. That was awesome. Aw, thank you so much. Thank you guys for giving me your time. I hope I added a little bit of value. Okay, so we're gonna click off and then do I hit the other Zoom link? Yeah? Hey, bye everyone, good night.